That's what you just want to say. Oh, just your, your name. Um, oh, I, I started one there. Oh, then never mind. What are you asking for email and phone number? Yeah. Email and phone number optional, but we just like to know who's here. And, you know, that's part of why I'm here. So, welcome. Thank you all for. Welcome. I'll call this meeting to order in a few minutes after 7 o'clock. This is a public hearing of the Middlesex Planning Commission on our draft of the town plan. It, the draft is dated May 15, 2019. Um, there's a hard copy there. There's electronic copies available on the Middlesex website. Thank you all, all for coming. Um, we're here to listen to what you all have to say. Um, the town plan is the plan for the entire town of Middlesex, and it's great to have input from as many folks and hear what people think about what the work we've done so far. Um, we've been working on this plan for a number of months, um, and it was a fairly quick process based on the information that came out of What's Next Middlesex that happened in the, in the fall this past this was um, this past year, and also sort of building on what was already in our town plan. We've had a town plan for many years, but the town plan had expired, and without a valid active town plan, you can't apply for grants, you can't change your zoning, there's a lot of things you really can't do, so it was pretty important that we get a new town plan in place and, and move forward. It can always be amended, and that's you know something we can do going forward. Um, so we're here mostly to, to hear from you. I'm Sandy Levine. I'm the chair of the Middlesex Planning Commission. And I'll have the other planning commission members introduce themselves. I live on South Pier Swamp Road. Uh, my name is Mitch Oshevsky. I'm on the planning commission. I'm also the zoning administrator. I live on French Road. I'm Theo Kennedy. I'm on the planning commission. I live on Shady Real Road. Elias Gardner, also on the planning commission. And I'm Cobra Keller. Jeff Alderman, planning commission. Lister, Center Road. Do you all want to introduce yourselves? It's a small enough group, do you mind? Uh, Jim Gallagher, I live up on the General General. Uh, Stanley Springer, I live locally, I grew up locally, and I'm, frankly, I hear you could say just blatant, flat out self interest uh, because my family has a dairy farm, you know, 200 acres of land. You know, farming's going through transition, and I had a couple of plots I wanted to sort of run by the planning commission and sort of see how they could fit in with the um, you know, vision for town. So. I'm George Longhorn, I live on East Toro Road. I'm on the Conservation Commission and the Budget. Oh, I'm Mike Belcher, I live on uh, McCullough Hill Road. Uh, Michael Levine, I'm on South Coast Park Road. And I brought some snacks. Feel free to get up whenever you want and help yourself. So as I said, we're here to listen. So thoughts, input, any ideas, welcome. A couple of comments. Most of them related to what the conservation um, On page 39, and I just want to thank you. It's a, it's a great I was pretty was impressed with the TV on that. Easy to read, easy to follow. On the town forest portion, which is on page 39, you mentioned that the town forest stewardship committee um, does the work on the town forest. Actually, it would be better to say the conservation commission now that it's the day to day work. There are two remaining members of the forest stewardship committee. They're the same people as the conservation. Okay. But it, well, it's going well. You might, I don't know if you mentioned it in that, there are the trails. So we're going after uh, Vermont uh, YCC, these conservation court grants to build trails on the town forest. And it also has a cabin. We have no idea what to do. A what? A, a cabin. There's a cabin up there. Oh, a cabin. I thought you said a cavern. cavern. <laughs> <laughs> cavern. Some rehabilitation, and we're trying to figure out if we're okay. doing that. Cabin, OK. Yeah. Is it one cabin or two cabins? Uh, there are two. The, the owner 
the former owner has a 99 year oh, yeah. uh, almost free of on that the other one the town. So it might be worth mentioning. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it for us about at the ash core. Maybe something to think about. And the uh, Conservation Commission uh, is doing a ash core survey just along the town road. Mm -hmm. you can't possibly destroy the ash But it's going to impact us. So the, the thought is there, what, to mention that that's an impact that we should be mindful of and recognize the Conservation Commission is doing a survey? Is aware of that, yeah. Oh. The trees have to be cut down when you get the way ash would spread. You're trying to get ahead of it. I'd like to think it's not going to happen. Um, Waterways, I, I thought that was a good section. It's on page 42. I don't know if you noted, though, that the town just obtained the upgrades with the headwaters. Uh, uh, Herrick, Patterson, and Marlins, that's in the town record of the select board in the country. So those, the water quality of those streams were fixed by the top. You might mention uh, uh, Martin's Brook, which most people know is Shady Rill. There are two water quality problems with that that people are getting grants to fix. That's the guy. I'm trying to think of a full name. The Winooski River Conservation District. That's mm -hmm. an advance, too. One is across from the school. You can't see it. It's something about the drain of his eroding the school. Mm -hmm. And the other grant is for Shady Road Park to move the pictures down there to look at that too, to move the uh, picnic tables back away from the street where there's a lot of the work. And are those things that are ongoing now? Those are ongoing now. The okay. work in the park will probably happen next year. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a while. But that's an odd part because it's not a town park. It's not part of Wrightsville Conservation District, and it's not a state park. It's part of the Agency of Natural Resources. Quick fact, the Army Corps of Engineers created that back when the Wrightsville Reservoir was built. And it was sort of designed as a flood spillway. And the basically the I think it was the Corps of Engineers when they built it, the state was required to maintain that in perpetuity. Yeah. And a couple of times they've tried to stop doing that, but Colin O'Neill keeps finding the documents saying that they're going to keep taking care of it. So they're still taking care of it. So the town they, almost wrong. It doesn't seem to be in the plan, but the town uh, actually approved $5,000. And then the state was all Anyhow, that's going to be upgraded. Um, the, the, I thought the energy section was good. The problem. You might note that the town passed a resolution in town. It's controversial, but passed by a brother. Non-binding. The two big energy uses middle sets are the two big there's our I-89 the whole We don't have much control over it. It's a municipality. My only other comment was on the village district in Putnam. We talked about this in conservation. Putnam Hill is really different than this way. You did mention it needs to be addressed, but there's really in specifics of how far the residents there should be. I've heard from residents of Putnamville. Oh, good. And they said, with respect to the survey, they don't care what the town thinks, but they view themselves as a village. And always <laughs> will, no matter what we designate them. And I, I assured them that. This is only a town plan. We're not rewriting any zoning regulations right now. That's down the road. 
and we will certainly seek lots of input before we make any substantive changes to that document as well. So, but we always appreciate input. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. So, actually, I mean, what I'm interested in, uh, I don't own the land, but, uh, you know, my family has a dairy farm and stopped milking cows, and they're, you know, a few hundred acres of land along the river, and there's, uh, you know, a question in the family's mind about, well, more in my mind about what's going to happen. And uh, and I'm looking at ways that, I mean, my mom is happy right where she is, but, uh, you know, bankers do have debts and they do want to uh, have them settled eventually. And the dilemma that she faces uh, with farmland is that, uh, say for example, with Southern farmers right now, the land the farm stand is on, the grand risk value is uh, $58,000 an acre. And the field base site, you know, that's just the way we refer to it, it's four or five acres of land. Uh, you know, people over the years have been interested in using that as a uh, well, you know, some kind of a industrial use. And I I guess I'm kind of partial to farming and uh, and I also uh, you know been sort of follow well following the river flooding, you know, all my life. And it's gotten quite a few years now that I've seen it go over the banks and have an idea of a way for my family to uh, pay down this debt, which would actually improve the floodway. And I've been looking at the state of Vermont um, Agency of Natural Resources, DNC, and there's all kinds of uh, work being done with the Lake Champlain watershed. And one of the ways uh, that the farm could pay down some debt would be that field in front of the farm stand. You could take out approximately, say, half a million yards of sand and gravel there, and you'd still have farmland. And you would, in fact, have uh, increased the flood rate. And the other thing is, uh, and I've been watching the discussions about uh, storm water runoff and how to uh, manage it. And one of the thoughts I've had is actually to take these fields and uh, instead of trying to uh, keep the water out, I mean, actually bring the water in to, uh, to filter and as a way of also Well, you could be reducing the erosion on the riverbanks, but the first thing that you know, I need to do is to sort of run the idea by of, uh, well, you know, to be able to say to the bankers that, okay, well, we've got the source of revenue in here, and the town does need sand and gravel. And the real question is, well, would you rather have you know, commercial and industrial stuff going on out there, or would you rather have, uh, well, something that could be created and, and innovated because, uh, you know, the science uh, is evolving, and, and, and the other thing is I'm looking at that as being a small part of what's going on in Middlesex, because, uh, I mean, you're right, I mean, the town needs a plan to be able to look at these funding sources, but, I mean, my family's got the land along the river, but then there's, uh, you know, 250 acres of James Colby's uh, up at the interchange there, and I'm 
frankly kind of amazed that someone has done something with that. But the idea of somehow or other, uh, I mean, that is right at the interchange, and you could do so many different things, you know. Uh, and, you know, the price I've seen, it's like, you know, $950,000. Well, you know, they, I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, I, don't, I can't write that check, but for a project, uh, they could be huge, uh, and then you've got Betty Corbel's property. Uh, she passed away this year, um, and there's a couple hundred acres of land there. Uh, then you've got uh, Steve Martin and Persons Farm. I mean, there's some big pieces of land in Middlesex, and I mean, I kind of, you know, dream, imagine, whatever. I mean, not someone telling these landowners what to do, but somehow or other, you know, almost like a club you could be a part of that you could draw on uh, collaboration. Um, and, you know, what's going on with, with Camp Meet, I mean, it's just, you know, a tiny sample of you know, what's possible. You know, the pluralist next door and that's coming along. Um, the farm stand down here at, at the corner. I mean I've warned them repeatedly that they need to be prepared for success because that is a phenomenal location. And frankly they are doing you know, a wonderful job. Um, they really put their heart in it. And then frankly you know, the dairy farm over there. Um, that's 40 acres uh, my mother's sister uh, used to call it, um, you know, River View uh, Resort. But uh, as far as a place where something could be done with me other than milking cows, I mean, I'm not advocated for anybody to milk cows. And, uh, but, you know, maybe, uh, and then there's a land going down to 100 uh, B. You know, there's another. In the close to 48 or the old bay that's uh, some commercial industrial. So I don't I don't have the answer. I mean, you know, my first question is I'm you know approaching this person from uh, the Agency of Natural Resources about you know the uh, the idea of uh, sand and gravel, which would really just basically die by my family time. Um, but that could just be the beginning of you know, what do we do about you know, these flutters? Uh, mm -hmm. And so, so are, are you looking for ideas as what to do with the land? Well, are, are you, I mean, what, uh, what would be well, I mean, well, right now, I mean, I'm exploring the idea of uh, of the that field. Staying, you know, in farming and you know, taking out sand and gravel, but in the process of taking out sand, I mean, sand and gravel. I mean, that's just sort of a means to, to an end, because there are people in the natural resources planning community, community that, uh, you know, looking at, you know, how could these floodplains be managed differently, and. Uh, you know, there's all this, you know, phosphorus, there's all this silt, you know, going into uh, Lake Champlain, and, uh, you know, it's just, just washing away. And, uh, you know, you can fill it in, or maybe you can, I mean, in the dairy farm over there, I mean, it, if you, I sort of joke, if you want to see what a million dollars looks like, uh, drive over there and there are two harvester silos, they're those round blue. Um, farmers used to call them blue jewels, but uh, you know they were for the dairy farm. But frankly, you know their you know industrial scale you know, materials processing things. It could be whether they're processing things from other farms. Um, I mean, who knows? But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the idea almost of like a like, like an interest. Ideas. ideas, yeah. Like yeah. How to turn this land to Yeah, well, I mean, here. frankly, the folks over at Camp Mead, you know, one of them is uh, apparently experienced to doing uh, 
public events. Um, you know, we used to have the pumpkin show at the farm stand, but you know, the idea of you know whether you put in your corn maze or you do, uh, and whether it's there or somewhere else. Um, but well, but the I guess I guess I'm sort of looking at the dream of of uh, you know working on something that you know create builds a synergy uh, so you don't have I mean ideally you know James Colby um, you know, I don't think the guy's looking to get rich you know I mean he's you know his 70s or something you know he came from town but he's got this land something's got to be done with it and uh, there is somebody who I would just think in his heart and his soul would never I would meet Probably a nice guy for his son, but uh, you know, I generally think people are good. You know, and uh, if you give them a chance to uh, you know, do something positive, uh, but you know, you can sort of let things happen, or you can sort of take steps and uh, you know, explore ideas. So, That's know. good. Other folks have thoughts or input. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, folks, for doing all the work you're doing. And, and this village, I mean, I mean, one of the things that would be great if the planning commission would do it, I mean, I mean I've heard about it, but I've never done it before, but I don't know, Sim City or what's it, what it's called. But almost like, like a playing game, uh, you know, they say mm -hmm. for kids in education, you know, learning, you know, manipulatives. Um, you know, Buck Minister Florida used to have the world game, but the idea of there are all these different parcels, you know, in Middlesex, and, you know, but I just learned from Jimmy that um, Bucky LeCamp passed away, and, you know, down behind his house, um, Leon Tower owns it, and it's, you know, Jason can't meet there, I mean, it's the primeval, primeval um, wilderness, paradise in there, and it's just something that, that nobody knows about, but um, yeah, it, that piece could be fit in with some of these other ones, so, but it's, uh, well, I mean, you guys are leading, leading the way. That's great. That's good input. Thank you. What you've done, man. so, and I'm a, I'm a supporter, don't misunderstand them in any way, you know. I thought the uh, current use paragraph on page 35 was kind of weak. Um, it refers to it as a popular program, but it's only 686 properties enrolled. Because the main restraint on the, on, on the enrollment is that you need a minimum of 25 acres, which is not mentioned as pretty important. In fact, that's the big factor that people cannot overcome. And if you, if you develop that, property with a house, then you have to take this is a row of two acres for the given house so two more acres. So um, I just thought that could be better be. And also what the land once it's put into current use, it stays in current use whether you sell the house or property or not. And if you remove it from uh, current use is that you have to pay a penalty. Does, does, current, does current use have a time frame, like 10 years? No. There's, there's, no. It's no big, time frame. Big, so once well, it's in there, it stays as in As long as you maintain the requirements of the current use, which right. includes a forestry plan and action right. group. <clears throat> right. Right now. Good. Thanks. Well, I'm, there are actually, I mean, when you look, when you know the stick from the grand list work, but I mean, there are a couple of huge parcels of land in Middlesex. I mean, <coughs> right? Yeah, you know, 2,000 acres of land. And yeah, I, mean, I remember, you know, hearing this um, radio program talking about uh, uh, it was carbon collab collaborative or something, you know, but the idea of um, you know, pooling land together, um, whether it's, uh, I mean, you're talking about the current use thing, 
well, looking at working ground paths so that um, you could, on one hand, you sort of wash the other, I mean, keeping it in current use, but you'd also be doing the, the housing. Yeah, that's and, the types of current use as opposed to being agriculture. Of course, your family is in agriculture, and that's a much better deal. Current use, and all farm buildings uh, also uh, have to be covered. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, you know, open land, one of the houses, so where that's where yeah. dollars go for the kind of services. So, but we don't need them too. Other thoughts or input? Thank you. Just a question I had. This was really interesting to read. I learned a lot from can, can you, I'm assuming people know you, but can you introduce uh, yourself? I can really just. I'm over on Wood Road. Thanks. And I'm, I was really fascinated by page 23, and there's a paragraph in there under commuting. And I just, I, I raised it just because I'm wondering what the going theories are about it. In the third paragraph under B on commuting, it talks about the fact that 60% fewer Middlesex residents used other means such as the bicycle to get to work. And the number of people that work from home dropped 55%. And I just am curious what different theories might be around that. I mean, I have one, which is related to broadband, and and for what it's worth, there are some very interesting things going on in central Vermont with the uh, work being done with uh, the CUDs, the Communication Unions Districts, and that could make a difference in Middlesex, and I hope that it will, and I hope the next town plan will talk about how that might have impacted that. But I, other than that, I see, Elijah, you're nodding, well, but I'm wondering what your theory sure. is. But I'm also thinking yeah. that the numbers are so small that how right. many people is that really? I'm looking here, you know, we right. had nine people walking in 2010 and 18 in 2016. And the, right. the, so the other thing to, to note is some of these numbers, I, I think we have a, a bunch of um, caveats. We have to have these numbers in the town plan. They're extrapolated based on prior census data. So. And, and when the pool, when the sample size is so small, gotcha. don't read too much into it. Understood. <laughs> I would I would have just predicted that there would be a lot more people working from home. Oh. We talk so much about how that's a thing, so, I mean, and we know we have our challenges right. with broadband. Yeah. But anyway, that that there, there may also be. I think there's. I can speculate. There's yeah. more pe more people out in the workforce and not staying home. And, and you know, as part-time workers, so that might also be part of it. I mean, I, to me, it really comes down to the broadband. So yeah. I really think that you know, over the years, internet applications require more and more internet speed, and ours hasn't gotten any better. If anything, it's gotten worse for most people. And that you can't. Most houses in Middlesex don't have an internet connection. You can work from home. Yeah. The, the only general comment, on my comments are much less interesting than your <laughs> comments, but. I thought that the section, I tried to make a note of it so I could be efficient here, um, achieving the vision, I thought that was such a helpful section. I personally, for what it's worth, would have liked to see that move up mm -hmm. further in the beginning, even if it was just a, a little box, because I thought the info in it was super good, like this is going to last for eight years. and you know, whatever the little pieces were. And it did just a nice job setting you up for how you did the goals, strategies, and objectives, which I thought was so good. And it's always just useful to run that through up front mm -hmm. for your reader, just as sort of a hand-holding. Mm -hmm. And great photography. <laughs> I think I know where some of that came from. <laughs> And I guess the only other thing I would say is I personally am so excited about all the work that Mike and colleagues have running through their minds with planetary matters, and 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 I do wonder what Exit 9 will look like in the future. And, and I know that there's been some talk about um, you know light rail, and I like how you folded it in saying it's in the longer term future. And there is a study being done to look at uh, light rail, and there's a, a federal piece that's going with it called positive train control. There, was, there were those terrible crashes that took place in the Pacific Northwest. 
And so that may end up making uh, use of rail much more complicated because of what is required, as I understand it, which is very little, but of the tracks and of the equipment used on those tracks. Mm -hmm. But I think the bud cars that that have been talked about potentially for use in Vermont and just they're all... They're sitting in the rail. They're ready to go. I know. Going to have the guy got to give him credit. He put his money where his mouth is. Completely. And, uh, well, and actually, you know, one of the other resources uh, that you don't mention there, I mean, sometimes people look at politics as a very word, but, um, but I look at politics of life, you know, it's just interacting with people. And uh, we have Patrick Reagan, and uh, if there's anyone uh, who would have an interest in supporting, you know, the future of Middlesex. I mean, I mean, of course, he has to work in Washington, but you know, it's hard to do. You know, he's, you know, he may be top of food chain, but you know, he's kind of a good person too. You know. But he's not getting any younger either. So, uh, so for us to uh, be pra pragmatic uh, about. Um, Thanks for not being a crazy dream. It's great. So I have uh, really just uh, want to thank the Planning Commission. I came in with a very long list of very specific suggestions at the last meeting. And I appreciate you going through each one very carefully. Um, didn't you know? agree with all of them, that's fine. But there is one that I would like you to reconsider out of all of those. <laughs> and, I just, I just feel like the word is kind of inappropriate. It's towards the end where we're talking about Putnamville. And the sentence reads, with recent successful development focused along Route 2 and closer to the interstate, Putnamville has seen little change. At the end of that is obviously fine. I just wonder if you have a word like successful, like based on what? What's your criteria for that? And it just seemed like it stuck out as a, um, you know, somebody's opinion, but not really belonging in the plan. So I would just say, with recent development, rather than recent success in development. Michael, could you mention again what page that was on? I didn't. Yes, it is on page 66. Thank you. Paragraph five. You're in competition with a fan behind me. Paragraph five, line six. Okay, thank you. Mike pays no attention to detail, Mike. <laughs> Thank you for your input. Thank you. Thank you. Other thoughts, comments? Well, you guys did a phenomenal job. So once you have this in hand, and that's where the achieving vision, or yes, achieving vision, you then, how might this be used in a way that might be different from how past plans were used? I don't know all about how past plans are used, but all <clears throat> plans, how this will be used, it will help guide any zoning changes that we might consider. There's been talk about changing some, some of the zoning in town. Um, it would... Um, it would guide uh, continuing work on energy siting issues. I think we were looking at doing an enhanced energy plan for the town and working with the Regional Planning Commission, and this is one step in that process. Um, what really got us moving in this direction is we had looked into getting a, a grant for some transportation improvements, some sidewalks, um, um, streetscape improvements along through the Middlesex Village here last year. And we weren't even qualified because we didn't have a valid town plan. So we, we got kicked out before we could even really apply. So we were really interested in seeing if we could get a new town plan in place so we might be able to apply again next year. So that's, that's one of the things that I think we're looking to use. I would say this year. This year, that's right. It's not so long fact, next year. That was an excellent setup. I'm just going to add on to that. OK. Um, I attended a workshop yesterday held by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and one of the presentations they did was about the state's 
municipal planning grant program. And they talked about, um, you know, they actually said uh, one of their concerns is that um, funding has been cut in recent years and they are trying hard to get that back to historical levels of funding. And they mentioned some things, I won't go through this in detail right now, but if anybody wants to talk to me about it later, I'm happy to. But they mentioned that the um, program that they are running for this year, um, they do municipal grants up to a maximum of $22,000 for a community, or you can do $35,000 if you work as a consortium with a neighboring community. And it's basically a 10% cash match can come from any source. So, for example, we could apply for a $20,000 grant to do, we were talking last year about a streetscape feasibility study. Um, and there's a bunch of things like that that you're eligible for. We would have to raise $2,000 and we would be eligible for a $20,000 match. And they have some quick statistics in here about last year they awarded $450,000 and they got 67 applications, they awarded 29 grants. And they had $950,000 requested and they basically were able to fund about half of the projects. And we were one of those that got cut out of the pile right away because we didn't meet that really basic criteria. And September 30th is the deadline for an application for this year. So our goal is to have a town plan approved before September 30th so that we can apply for a grant. And they had some really helpful information yesterday about how to do this grant writing and how you can reach out to community members to help polish up your grant. And they said, you know, something people forget about is every town has got a bunch of people who are terrific writers. And you sort of start this stuff, and you don't have to do it yourself. You just reach out to your writers in town, and they'll step up and help with stuff like that. And one of the big takeaways was that um, things that you identify in your town plan as goals, objectives, tasks, you know, those are the sorts of things that they look at and say, oh, you know, they've addressed this in the town plan. They're ready to do this. And you know, it's like almost like a shovel-ready project. That's the sort of thing that gets you the point that you need to kind of get moving on this. So, you know, there's some. That's one of the reasons that a, a well thought out town plan is important because it can help identify the kind of things that these folks are looking for when they review a grant application. That'll help us. And you know, they, you know, one of the guys that talked yesterday said that he's been doing this for 10 years and he gets a grant almost every year. You know. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, whatever. And he said that you know, after a while, he said it just gets to be a game and you just keep doing it. <laughs> and, you know, so Play we've historically odds. not done that sort of stuff in town. And, you know, as Stan mentioned, there's a ton of opportunities in town. There's people already doing some things like Mike and his group. And, you know, there's tons of opportunities. And, you know, yeah, you know we're not telling landowners how to use their land, but if people have creative ideas, I think part of our goal is to help. One of the things I'd like to shout out on uh, Field County Planning Commission is the whole What's Next Middlesex process uh, brought many people together to talk about opportunities in the town and uh, kind of recognizing the need for a feasibility study for the village center was kind of a precipitate of that process. And those groups are ongoing. So we have the economic development infrastructure one, trails, communication, and the fourth is uh, spaces, building spaces, I think. Yeah, so, so th that continuing work, I think uh, this is a formally warm public hearing. We're here, we're very glad to get comment, but the ability to have ongoing input through some of those other community groups, I think is a, is a real deal. Uh, and you know, the, I know that economic and it, development infrastructure is meeting tomorrow night, and we're gonna continue to try to kind of figure out where there's a synergy between private folks and the formal planning commission. And just to be clear, next steps on this after we'll close the, the public hearing shortly, um, we'll then meet and talk about what changes um, to make on the town plan. Um, it then is passed off to the select board. They will review it themselves. They've provided some feedback already. They have to have their own public hearing um, on the town plan and then it also will be reviewed by the Regional Planning Commission in the next couple of months. So there's still 
still a lot of process to do, but a lot of the groundwork is laid, and thank you all for your help and input. I'd just like to suggest to you guys to, I mean, don't let perfect be the enemy of good, and you've got, you know, a darn good product here, and, you know, with the timeline that you mentioned it, so, you know, I'd encourage you to you know, proceed full speed ahead, you know, and, Stan, it's like you were with us. Right, thank you. Well, you know, we actually, yeah. She doesn't get enough credit, but a planner from South Burlington, Kathy DeRose, came out as a consultant to help us with this project. She did a lot of the work as well. She got paid for it, we didn't. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but very first meeting, that was her, one of her takeaways, was don't let the enemy, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Yeah, yeah. and this is, you know, I mean, well, you mentioned the timeline, you know, and so, People can keep coming, you know, working on it. You know, not just cast concrete yeah. here. You guys are, right. people are flexible, so we'll speed ahead and see. I'd say. Well, I think in line with that, it's, it's not perfect now. That means we keep it a living document. Just exactly. we all keep yeah. revisiting, and that keeps it meaningful. Yeah. And not that I'm competitive or anything, but I did just see something in the Times Argus a few weeks ago that Town of Berlin just adopted a new town plan. <laughs> They got an award for their town plan. <laughs> oh, what? We Let's were get their town plan. Oh, so they hadn't seen ours yet. They haven't seen ours yet. Yeah. 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 I'm hoping. Okay, if there's nothing further, um, I will entertain a vote to a motion for a vote to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. A second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Public hearing is closed.